The following program is video supplemental instruction. VSI is brought to you by the Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu. Problem 5 says you push on the 8 kilogram block in the figure on the left with a force of 20 newtons. What is the magnitude of the horizontal force of the 2 kilogram mass on the 8 kilogram mass? All surfaces are frictionless. So, give us two blocks. This is uh, basically an internal force problem, very similar to the problems where you were asked to solve for tension back when you're doing forces with uh, pulleys. So whenever you're doing these problems, the way to approach it is to look at the entire system as a whole and solve for the acceleration. Once you know the acceleration, then you can solve for any internal forces you need. Without that acceleration, you can't do it. So um, you can either do it this way, or you can set up individual ways. You can uh, set up a system of equations blocks, but in my opinion, this, this way is much faster. So, we're going to look at this system, and because they're right up against each other, we can treat them as one object, basically. One object of ten, a mass of 10 kilograms. So, going back to Newton's law, the sum of forces must be equal to our mass times our acceleration. We can say that we only have one force, so they tell us there's no friction, there's nothing else going on. We do have our weight pulling down on both of these guys, and the normal force pulling up but those two forces don't come into play in this because there's no friction. They have nothing to do with how fast the system is going to be accelerating. So 20 is equal to 8 plus 2 kilograms, both the masses, times our acceleration. Thus, our acceleration is just going to be 20 over 10, or 2 meters per second squared. choices, and I'll go through both of them real quick for you. You can either look at the 8 kilogram block, or you can look at the 2 kilogram block. And if you are one of those people that do decide to look at the system of equations, then I'll be able to, I'll be setting up both the equations that you'd be using to solve simultaneously for the internal force. So, um, if we look at the 8 kilogram, then we know it's accelerating, 2 meters per second squared, so we'll to the right. We know it has a 20 newton force. We know it has that internal force of this 2 kilogram block pushing on it. And don't forget, the internal forces are going to be equal in magnitude in opposite directions. So you can solve for the 2 on the 8 or the 8 on the 2. It doesn't matter which one you do because they're going to be exactly the same value. They could have raised this question either the force of the 2 on the 8 or the 8 on the 2 and it would give you the exact same answer. So I'm just going to use the internal force to represent F sub i to represent both the 2 on the 8 and the 8 on the 2. So if this is the system, that, or if this is the object we're looking at, we're isolating the 8 kilogram, then we're going to say that the sum of the forces is going to be 20 minus our internal force is going to be equal to our mass of 8 times our acceleration of 2, which is going to be positive because it points towards the right. So what we're going to end up saying is 20 is going to be minus 16, 8 times 2, is 16. It's going to be equal to our internal force, or just quite simply, our internal force is going to be equal to 4 newtons. Okay? So that's the first way to look at it. You can also look at the 2 kilogram block, which is actually going to be a little bit easier, because the only force acting on this guy is the internal force. This 20 acts directly on the 8. It does not touch the 2, so it's not included in this this setup or this equation, this free body diagram. So we do our sum of forces on this one. All we have is the internal force. And that's going to be equal to the mass of this block, 2, times our acceleration, which is also 2. And once again, we end up saying that the internal force is equal to 4 newtons. So either way you look at it is perfectly fine. Like this way I'm doing it, where you're looking at the entire system and then isolating, you can look at each of the blocks and draw your two separate free body diagrams from the start and 
use this equation and this equation with an unknown acceleration, and you can still solve for the internal force. Either way works fine. I personally think this way is a little quicker and a little easier once you get used to it. And that's uh, how you solve the problem. Four newtons is your answer, which is going to be our first choice. The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu.